I'm doing this video series because there is a 19.1 version of Apex now. I have a complete video series for Oracle Apex 18.1 and the current series will use Apex 19.1 and will follow in parallel with the same steps in the 18.1 series. So I have for software this time XE 11.2, Apex 19.1, SQL Developer 19.1. I will not walk through the steps of installing XE and upgrading to Apex 19.1. You can look at the previous video series and this particular video, Apex 00 of 30, if you want a demonstration of how to install XE and upgrade Apex. The steps of going from Apex 18.1 to 19.1 are the same. So if you want to work along, you can download and install Oracle Oracle XE 11.2, or you can use the most current version, which I do not have installed. You can download Oracle Apex 19.1 and go through the steps of upgrading to that. The one other thing that I have is I have also installed a translated version of Apex for Spanish. So if you're interested in that, you can go to the documentation. It's pretty simple to follow and pretty easy to do. But it's not quite as simple as I've seen on a few posts online. It's not just a matter of selecting a different language. You do have to install a set of support files, images, and other things that will provide the translated version of Apex. Once you've done that, then when you log in and go to, in my case, the local install of Oracle Apex, I can pick between Spanish and English. So if I look at my version of the database, as I told you, if I run this, then I can see that I do have 11.2 installed. I can go to SQL Developer Help About and see that I'm working with version 19.1. So let's get started. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at the two applications we have a development application and what will probably be our production application. So we'll take a look at the shared components. Then we're going to modify the report and form for animals. We will add navigation features to the top of the page for the animal report. We will look at the form for data entry for animals and modify the display of some list of values. Instead of having a select list, which is like a drop-down list, we'll use radio group. We're going to copy the report and form to the production application. And when I do that, if I don't forget, I will show an example of using breadcrumbs. And then we'll view the production application as a regular user. Way back at the beginning, we created a testing user account. So when I come over here to log in, the first thing I want to do is I want to log in as the administrator. So I'm going to sign in and just show you that as the administrator of this workspace, I'm not, this is not the overall administrator for Apex, but just for this workspace, I can go to Manage Users and I see that I have a testing account. Typically, I log in as Carla Mora because that's the developer account. So I will now log out and go back in as Carla Mora. If I go to Application Builder, I see my two applications. This is the one we've done our development in. We made a copy or we made a new application and imported or copied over uh, a few things into this what might be our future production application. If I go into the production application and I go into shared components, the main thing I want to emphasize right now is there are no list of values. Whereas if we go back to our regular application, the one we've been using all the time, 
if we go into shared components, we have lots of lists of values. You'll see the impact when we do a copy of a report and form over to the production application from the development application. So the first thing I want to do is go to the application itself and run the application. And I need to log in. And we have list of animals as a report. And I have to scroll way down to get to the navigation to additional records. You can change the number of rows that are displayed here by setting rows per page. But what I want to do right now is simply repeat the navigation feature at the top of the page as well as at the bottom of the page. So I'm going to edit this page. On the left hand side I will select attributes for that report. Then I will scroll down on the right hand side and see that I have some options. I'm going to change the type and the display position. So I'm going to choose X of Y, X to Y of Z. So I'll see a different numbering. And I want not just the bottom right, but I want top and bottom right. So I will save that, and I will run that. So now I can navigate at the top of the page. I don't have to scroll down to the bottom of the page. I'm going to go in now to the form. I'll select Cookie, click Edit, and we see the form where we have created some lists of values to help us with data entry. So for sex, I want to edit that. I'm going to edit this page, which is page 5. On the left-hand side, I'll get that page item. On the right-hand side, I will change from pop-up LOV to radio group. Once I do that, under settings, I can set the number of columns. I'll leave that for now and come back in just a second. So let me save this and show you what's going to happen in the display. So I have a no value selected option, female, male, and unknown. We do not need this option, and I want the display to go across, I want the display to go across in a row, a single row. So I will come and change the setting to three columns in that row. And then I will scroll down to the list of values and say display null value no. And I will save that and go look at that. So now I have female, male, and unknown. I'm going to go back to edit the page. And I'm going to modify house trained. Same thing, I'll switch from select list to radio group. I will select three. And let me just mention here, actually looking at radio group, that's all I'm going to use. You do have, it's off the top of this screen, but you have a thing called checkbox and you have a thing called shuttle. Both the checkbox and shuttle will allow you to do multiple selections for that item, and we're not going to deal with that. If you have that as a feature in your form, you will have to deal with that in terms of how things get stored in the underlying tables. So I'm using only radio group because I want there to be only one option. You can't select yes and no and unknown. You can pick one of the three. So let me come down here to my list of values, display no value, no. Now I would like to change this also for status and spade. So I'm going to select status over in the left hand side. I'm going to hold down the control key and select spade neutered so that I have multiple selections. If these share common properties over on the right hand side, you can modify them at the same time. So I'm going to select radio group. I want three columns and scroll down and display no value no. 
and I will save and run the form. So house trained, yes, no, unknown. Notice on status, I actually have six choices, so I still have two rows, but that's fine with me. And for spayed, neutered, I have yes, no, unknown. So we've made those modifications to the form itself. And this is page five, and the report itself, if I come back here, is page two. When we copy, we'll need to make sure that the report opens the correct page for the form. So I will come back to Page Designer, click Application Builder, and I will go into the production version of the application. I'm just scanning these page numbers. We go from 1 to 7 because those were the numbers these pages had in the development application. I'm going to pick one of these pages. It doesn't matter which one because as soon as I get into Page Designer, I'm going to come up here and simply do a, a copy of a page. This will be a page from another application, so I'll select the development application. And then I will select the page two list animals, which is off the screen. Let me maybe bring that down. It's still off the screen. List of animals. And so it's showing page two, and it wants to be page three here. I think we'll be okay. Uh, now I'll move this up, and I'm going to do a breadcrumb. And if you do that, you will need to scroll down here over on the right and select a parent for the breadcrumb. In this case, it will be home. That was my only option. And I'm going to put entry name animal list, and I will select next. I do want to create a navigation menu item, and I'm going to put that under the animals, the animals home page. Oh, I always forget to do that, so this will be animal list. And click next. Finish. I can save that, run that. And we have a different look here. Under animals, I now have the report, the animals list. But I can go home and then come back to the launch page for animals and then select my animal list. I will go back to edit. I might as well do it from this page. And I will copy the form that goes along with that report. So it will be from the development application and that's page five it's the animal form with LOVs I'm going to I'm going to modify the page number here to match the five from the development application to five here in the production application if I don't do that I will need to edit what page gets opened after I've made the copy so I'm going to do this, and I'll modify and say just animal data info. I will do another breadcrumb, and this time the parent will be animal list, which is the report, and the name of this will be animal data entry. And click Next. I do not get a navigation item. We get to the form through the report. And then I will click Next, and notice what happens. you got to love Apex for this. Do we want to copy all those LOVs that are used by that form? Absolutely. I'll pause the video while I change all of these to copy. Then I'll click Next, and Next, and Finish. Then I can save and run that and I see the form as it is when it's blank. I'll go to my report, I'll pick one of these, Jake, and select Edit, and I see Jake listed here. And I see my modified displays, and if I go to the application itself and go to Shared Components, List of Values, those lists of values used by that form, that page, got copied over. A real time saver. 
The last thing I want to do is show you how we could take a look at this particular application from our testing, testing our regular user, the non-developer account. How do I know what my application URL is? Let's run the application and look up here. I don't need everything that's out to the right of this, but I do need page 115. So I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to open up a different browser. So I've opened up Edge, and I'm going to paste in the URL. And I'm getting prompted. Notice I'm not getting prompted for the workspace. I'm not going in as a developer. So I'm going in as testing, and I type in the password. And notice, even though you see this edit or designer bar, this is for Chrome, which is underneath here. But if I bring the Microsoft Edge open, I have no designer bar. I don't have access to that but I do have access to the application itself. So I can open up the report. I can scroll down and select an animal. And I can see the form. So this shows how the regular user will access an application. I'll see you in the next video.